Alfa Romeo's famous test track, Balocco, in northern Italy. And the reason we're here is to attend the launch of this car, the Alfa Romeo 4C, which I reckon is the most important Alfa Romeo for the last 20 years. Why is it so important? Well, it's the first time that the modern Alfa management have shown us what they really think an Alfa Romeo should be like. We've had saloons and super minis and all the rest of it, but those cars are simply old values expressed on convenient cars. This car here shows us what they think a modern Alfa Romeo should be like. The first thing about this car, of course, is that it's got a very rudimentary interior, appealing, but hard plastic, no carpets really on the floor. Here, what I'm tapping here is the actual carbon fiber chassis. There's a low console, not a lot of stuff. Just the, the rudiments, there's a familiar steering wheel. See these paddles? They work the six-speed box. No stick shift in this car and no, no clutch either. So what you do is twist the key to start, no looking around for some start button, and then you just give her the beans. And it sounds fab. There's an ignition cut every time you change gears, so it sounds like a little rally car. Brilliant. Loads of poke because the car only weighs 925, I think it is, dry, which is about the, the same weight as a Lotus Exige, in fact, lighter than some of them. And so, with 240 horsepower and quite a lot of torque from a turbocharged engine, it really goes a bit. And the lightness of the car spreads everywhere. It means it brakes really well. It's got sensational brakes, this car. It also changes direction really easily because the tires are, well, the load to be transferred is, uh, is low. But the most remarkable thing about it is that it rides really well. You won't believe it. It rides so brilliantly. I think it'll even work in Britain on the rubbish roads we have in most of our uh, counties. The thing that's really remarkable about this car is that they've had the courage, I suppose, to, to build what is, I guess, the flagship Alfa Romeo with a four-cylinder engine. There are lots of people who say it needs a V6, it needs a stick shift and all the rest of it. This is what Alphas were like, light, simple, built of improved mainstream components, but held within a beautiful design. This car, if you go back in Alfa history, is really very, very similar, or at least similar in concept to some of the stuff they were making 40 years ago. And of course, the other thing that really stands out, puts this car, it's one of the reasons people compare it with an Elise, is that it has unassisted steering. And when you're stopped and you want to park it, you have to get back into the habit of supplying muscle to get it to do it. But once you're doing two or three miles an hour, it's fine. And then as soon as you're going down the road, it's beautiful. This is the fastest tight bend, a little bit of reverse camber. And you can, the effort does load up through the steering, but I love it. You, you know, you get used to it and you wouldn't have anything else really. I don't want the, uh, the responses of this car to be dulled in any way. It's fantastic. It is a lovely car, this. And uh, I'm, I'm just lost in admiration really for these guys because it's, it's also, you know, this animalistic nature and the fact that it's so basic in a way and so sophisticated in others. Um, it's, it's sort of a car that no one else would build except the Italians. It costs 45 grand, which some people will say that's a lot of money, but you know, McLaren are still boasting about having a carbon fiber chassis in cars that cost 200. And they're gonna build 17 of these a day in, in a factory in Naples. And there's, there's nothing really radical about the, um, about the process, but they're just doing it in greater volume than most people. I have had a wonderful day with the new Alpha 4C. It is everything it's cracked up to be. It is a very, very special Alfa Romeo. Perhaps not the perfect car. There's a couple of faults, I suppose. In my dreams, I would uh, 
just make it oversteer a little bit more easily and I would also maybe lower the gearing so you could power slide it in the lower gears. But it is a fantastic machine in almost every way. And uh, I tell you what, right here and now I'd rather have it than a Ferrari as long as you give me the test track to drive it on. Thank you.